This is the first practice run of the Alternative Financial Product presentation by Malik Mansour and Molly Simpson. Okay, so good evening everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to address the Chippewa Wingers to you all here. Thank you a lot for your presence. Um, as you can see on the screen, Molly and I will be focusing on what we call the Rush Card Prepaid Visa Card, which is basically an alternative French bank product. Um, so you can find the Rush Card at multiple locations, but the two that we've included um, as Brunswick locations is Walmart and Walgreens. And they are located at 150 Altama Connector and 4575 Altama Avenue. But there are other places that you can get this card at. So the subject can be looked at under the following headings. First of all, we have a brief breakdown of the company as a whole. So by company, we mean the owner of the card, the issuer of the card, the parent of the organization, and all the references that you may need if anyone want to purchase one. Then we'll take a closer look at a typical transaction, all the related fees and information. We'll also give you a brief summary of the major contract terms, just such as default, penalties, and that kind of thing. Then we will take a look at all the fees that I have already mentioned. And finally, we'll just um, give you a brief overview about the state and federal regulators that are controlling those type of financial operations related to this like prepaid card. Um, okay, so again, here is a, a sort of an overview of some of the companies that you can get a rush card from if you want to buy them at a retailer. Um, they're nationwide, so it's not just in one state. You can get them all over the country. Uh, the owner of Rush Card, when, at the time that it was founded, was actually Russell Simmons, believe it or not, but he eventually sold the company off and it's now owned by the Green Dot Corporation. Um, and we would like to show you what the um, website actually looks like if you would be fine with me running away from the camera for a second. Okay, be right back. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Um, so this is sort of what the, well when it comes up, it's what the website looks like. Um, so you can go on here to actually purchase your card, or get your card, sign up for it. Um, it'll tell you all about the fees and everything. Um, you can create an account. This is, you can even go in here and add money um, and it will go over everything with you. The process is really simple. Um, but this is what the website looks like um, if you were curious about that. Okay. <laughs> um, so the Rush card is not actually a credit card, it's actually a prepaid visa um, card, kind of like a debit card. Um, there's no credit check required to actually get the card, and it doesn't offer a lot of credit like traditional credit cards do. Um, so because of that, it doesn't actually impact your credit rating, which could be a positive or a negative for you. If you're looking for something that will impact, this won't do it for you. Um, but if you have poor credit, you, won't, you will still be allowed to get the card. Um, it does offer direct deposit, and actually, if you have direct deposit, your monthly fees associated with the card will be cheaper. Um, so that's a positive. Um, if you work for a company that offers direct deposit, you can actually get that onto the card. Um, and the cool thing about it is there's lots of ways to add funds to the card. You can do it through an authorized retailer like we showed you earlier. Um, you can do it by bank transfer, either from a bank that belongs to you or a bank that belongs to someone else. Um, you can do direct deposit, like I mentioned before, or you can even take a picture of your check um, with your mobile phone to deposit it. So, well, let's say that we're proceeding with an amount of $500 for three months. It's pretty easy. First of all, you just have to log into the website that Molly has just shown you, or at least sign up for an account. So it's not going to be a long process. You will be asked to fill in a form where you will be asked about your first and last name, um, your social security number as a proof of identity, your physical address in case they're going to email you the card within five or seven business days, um, your date of birth, obviously, and your email and phone number whenever they want to send you some updates about your transactions, about your account, or even reach out to you whenever they feel the need to. So we'll go on to this process of the fees and charges related to rush card in the next slide, but let us like focus on this part with Moli. So um, like I said earlier, this card does not offer a line of credit. So because of that, overdrafts aren't permitted. And that again could be a positive or a negative for you. If you want overdraft protection, you won't have it from this card, but you also won't have those traditional overdraft fees or anything like that because overdrafts aren't permitted. Um, so jurisdiction-wise, um, 
So basically, if any disputes arise relating to the website or um, the associated services of the card, the jurisdiction or where you would bring that to light in is the United States District Court for the Southern District of Ohio. That's who's responsible for any issues that arise. Um, as for defaults and penalties, we couldn't really find many. Um, because this is a prepaid visa, there's not a lot of risk involved on really either side. Um, but they do reserve the right to restrict access to the website if they feel you're using it unlawfully or if you're doing something wrong. Okay, let's go back to what we were talking about. Let's say that we have our first transaction on September the 1st, 2018. Uh, as I have mentioned, there are no fees related to the fact that you're getting the card. But let's say, for example, that you want to have a spark, shiny, uh, colorful design. Please notice that you will be charged $9.95 instead of $3.95 as a one-time free card. Um, then, as we go through the process, next slide, please, uh, we will note $500. With this, with this is the one-time card. Then we will be charged a monthly service fee with up direct deposit of the amount of $7.95. And if you want to have a cheapest option, we, we can do it with direct deposit, which will just cost us $5.95, which is not bad at all. Uh, this is the last slide, yeah. so this will be the total amount. Yes, and this is going to be the total amount of That's the basic our design and without direct deposit. Um, so some benefits of the Rush card, you can actually receive it pretty quickly, five to seven business days. If you order it online, it will come through the mail. Um, again, like we mentioned earlier, there's minimal documentation required to actually get the card. They just need a security number, physical address, email, phone number, and date of birth. Um, so that's not a lot of information to provide. Um, and it's very convenient to actually get the card. You can do it from the comfort of your own home. Um, you don't even have to leave your couch or whatever, and they'll just mail it to you. So I'd say that's pretty convenient. <laughs> and some other benefits that could be great, I mean, like, there's no credit check the rush card, just like Molly mentioned. So if any of you have a bad banking history or you're not really allowed to have a bank account, this is not really affect your ability to get the rush card. And everybody knows that international transaction fees are really, really expensive. And believe me, I know what I'm talking about. So the rush card here doesn't really charge you for international fees, which is really a good thing. So I really encourage you to get that card when you're going abroad. So our federal regulators are CFPB, FDIC, FinCEN, and FTC, and the state regulator is Georgia Department of Banking and Finance Non-Depository Financial Institutions Division. I know that's a very long name. We'll tell you a little bit about what those do in a minute. Um, and there are no local regulators. Well, what the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau does mainly is that it gives you free and access, uh, free and easy access to your account, first of all. Then it provides you with a better error resolution, and it also, I mean, like, if any of your card is stolen or you, you simply lost your card, what the CFBB mainly does is just protects you as a consumer and protects your rights and keeps, and keeps your money safe. So. Um, and the FDIC, which is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, um, they govern how customers are protected under FDIC insurance. Um, so with like traditional banks, they if the bank were to fail, it would cover if that this regulates um, how much money you'll get back or if you'll get your money back, things like that. If your money is protected by the government, um, and the same with these types of cards, um, the FTC, which is the Federal Trade Commission, governs what terms and disclosures needed to, need to be disclosed to the client at the time that they get the card, um, and then FinCEN, which is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, um, they regulate the monitoring of transaction types. So basically what that means, if you've ever gone into a bank and you've deposited $10,000 plus, um, usually what they'll ask you for more information because they have to do certain types of reporting. So cards like this tend to um, try to get away from that because of the risk of terrorist um, uh, fund financing, so they will cap cash deposits. So if you go into an authorized retailer to deposit actual cash, they won't allow you to deposit more than $2,500 with this particular type of card. I have seen it higher with other types, but for this particular one, it's $2,500 because there's no special reporting at that um, threshold. So, but another thing that they do with um, in relation to FinCEN is they don't let you do direct deposits of more than $10,000. i am not entirely sure what that's for because ACHs aren't covered when, with that cash amount, but they may just want to make sure that you're not carrying that high of a balance. 
Um, but that's kind of what FinCEN does is they try to protect against like terrorist financing and things like that. Um, and then the state regulator, we mentioned earlier, is the Georgia Department of Banking and Finance Non-Depository Financial Institutions Division. <laughs> um, basically what this regulator does is they regulate MSB companies and MSBs are money service business companies and MSBs are companies like um, that sell prepaid visa cards or that do check cashing and things like that. Um, and they just regulate how these companies um, uh, are supposed to uh, carry themselves and things like that. So um, this is just one of the type of companies that's covered under this uh, state regulator in the state of Georgia. Well, uh, our feedback about... Oh, and then there's no local regulators. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, holding that prepaid card to be safe in time of saving, as I already mentioned, you can just have it online and have it made to you within five or seven business days. You're not really affected by your ability to get the card because you don't have, even if you have a bad banking history, and you're not like safe to have like to these interest rates related to the credit checks because there is no credit check, there is no overdraft, so you don't have to pay extra fees for that, which is really something good. Um, and then same for me, um, I think a really positive thing about it is that you don't have that that credit check. Um, so if you have poor banking history, that doesn't factor in, you can still get this type of card. It's also cheaper in some respects, it depends on the bank that you go to, but it can be cheaper to have a card like this and it's probably much more secure <laughs> than, uh, <laughs> than uh, other traditional types of uh, debit cards. Um, but I do think that the regulations regarding these types of cards still have some improving to do. Um, so hopefully we'll see that um, when it comes to like consumer protection and things like that in the future. So, so do you guys have any questions or anything yeah, for you? Do you have any questions or comments? Well, give them a hand.